Hi everybody, it's it's Dave from Die Away Quern here. Thanks for visiting. Um, sorry you haven't had a video from me for a while. I've uh, been a bit out of commission for the last couple of weeks, but um, here I am back again. And I want to tell you about a fantastic seminar I went to in Brisbane with Seasook Peter Wong. Um, Seasook Wong is one of uh, Sigong Chushong Tin senior students and he came out here um, to run seminars in Brisbane, Sydney and Adelaide. And um, my good friend Stephen Lung organised it along with uh, Frank, who I, is also a good friend, but I only know him as Frank Wing Chun because of his Facebook name. <laughs> I can't think what his uh, surname is. But anyway, the guys helped Cecil organise and other people helped. And um, so anyway, at the seminar... It was the first day on the Saturday, uh, Sisuk was talking about Silnim Dao, just basic um, but fundamental things. And I can't remember how it happened, but I asked something about the spine, about singing, I think. And he said to me, you know, come out and um, I'll demonstrate on you and I'll just show you the video now of what happened and then I'll talk about it. Um, after I show you the video, so I'll just share the screen. That. Here we go. It's only a minute. <laughs> So I might as well explain as we go along. Uh, I've been doing Wing Chun for 20 years and have gone through, as most of us have, different understandings of what it's about and how it's set up. And the very first thing I was taught was called the stance, in which we measured out the stance from feet together and then opened our feet up and then turned the heels out. So we got a sort of a pigeon-toed sort of shape of the legs, bend the knees slightly, aiming towards the centre line and a sort of a triangular wedge idea. So um, over the years, different senior people in our Chushong Tin lineage said to me, you know, there isn't really a stance. Um, it's, it's the stance as you've learned it in your first year or two uh, was considered a good way to teach beginners and um, to get people thinking about aiming at the centre of the opponent or somebody else and connecting yourself. I thought, but um, I'd always found it quite um, well impossible to really relax my legs whilst pointing my toes inwards and, and bending. And people do say that they can relax like that. I just never could seem to. But um, Susanna Ho, who taught me in 99, told me you don't really need to stand like that uh, as long as your legs are relaxed. And I found that a great help and that did improve my Wing Chun somewhat at that time. But <clears throat> anyway, Sisuk wasn't specifically saying stance, but what he has to say is very much about the stance or about the, the way we set up our body standing still in Seal Nim Dao. So here he's just, he says it again, but he's he introduced something that I've never really heard of. This is the first time he was talking about drawing energy in through the Dan Tien and filling up the spine, which in Cantonese is Sing, to sort of expand the spine up as high as you can. And obviously the, the point is from Tai Gong, from the, the end of the spine, you want to expand right up to the Nim Dao, the, what's considered to be at the end of the spine, where the spine goes into the brain and that sets off this, um, this Nim Lik, this mind force. So he, he was saying to me, imagine drawing in. So I thought, right, I, I just, I have had an experience and it's something I do where I 
imagine drawing in the weight and energy and force of my opponent and I have experienced it like a sort of almost like a whirlwind whirling in could be to do with my yoga background because we think about in yoga breathing we think about spinning a spinning sort of whirlwind going in through what in yoga they call nuddies which is sort of like energy channels um so that's he started off saying that just do that you know imagine that coming in and then i'll show you he, he's on my spine and he's just putting his fingers on the different vertebrae and saying you know you know rise up here rise up you know just feel consciously feel the energy rising up coming in through the dan tian and then rising up the spine so So he's saying keep the idea, keep the idea of the front spine filled up. Okay, so this was an interesting point. He, um, it's not on this video, which actually I didn't know I was being filmed at the time. Uh, Frank filmed this and gave me permission to use the video. Um, he'd said, have no legs and feel as if your spine and your torso is just floating. And that really clicks with me because that's an idea I've had for many years and I've experienced it many times where my good friend and um, inspiration Tony Saylor said to me or said to a lot of us at a seminar here where I live several years ago um, something like in Wing Chun we don't have any legs and sort of indicating that we just float and that really stuck with me and it's just an idea but you sort of feel as if your spine's floating and your legs completely almost disappear I think that's that's extremely important part of this Sunim Dao mind energy set up with the body. Um, so Sisok's telling me you have no legs, you know, or if you don't want to stand. He's what he's saying is don't think about a stance, don't think about standing. Um, just imagine you're floating there. So he continues. Tell yourself you don't want to stand. Yeah, 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 yeah. Put no legs. Okay. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep thinking up. Build up. No legs. No legs. Now that was amazing and I've been looking forward to making this video for a couple of weeks. I said I've been a bit sick so um, I just get a bit of a bad chest and I've been ready to do this but um, that was a remarkable experience. So I'm going to show that bit again but like all great experiences with real Wing Chun, it's effortless and it feels like nothing. It, it feels like there's nothing happening. And I, as he started to push on me, I didn't know he was going to push on me. I, I just thought it was, we were just theoretical, theoretically talking about filling up the spine. The first time I knew he was going to push on me was when he's saying keep and then he put his hand on the front. I thought, oh, he's going to push on me. But I noticed at first he, he pushed quite hard and it was more than enough normally to unweight me where I would have gone back or had to try and, you know, do the wrong thing which we all tend to do is try to fight back try to sink into the stance become more rooted in the ground make more of a structure but i didn't do that because he'd said don't you have no legs you know no, don't stand uh just float so i just i just stayed there and 
my own way of doing this is I think um, you can't affect me. I just, it's a sort of a, just a confident thought. And he then pushed harder. You can see him lean in. And that's when it became a bit absurd because I could see what he was doing, but I, I couldn't feel anything, you know, and I'm watching the, I've watched this video many times, as you can imagine. And I see the slightest movement of my body, but it was, I, I literally felt like a massive tree with a light breeze blowing on. It was just nothing, nothing to worry about. And when he, he finally really leans in there, I turned and laughed at everybody. It was sort of a bit of a bliss hit me. It was like, this is impossible. And when I, I looked over at Frank and I saw he had a camera. I said, Do you, did you film that? He said, yeah. I thought, yes. Because <laughs> um, it's always been one of the exciting things for me about YouTube and about our, our phones being cameras is that there's so many wonderful things happening in life that are sort of miraculous but haven't really been seen because Camera's always clunky and people didn't have them to hand, but literally now you go pull it out, see everyone photographing and filming anything unusual. And um, this, what you've just seen is, is a, it's a small miracle, you know, a really good mate of mine who's um, a very uh, keen martial artist and have been into it for umpteen years like me, you know, always politely listens to my Wing Chun raves, but, doesn't really um, believe uh, as sincerely as I do that it's, you know, just incredible. And he wrote back to me and said, it's hard to see what's actually happening there. It just doesn't seem to be possible that you're not being affected. Um, and even though I'm a solid guy, believe me, my little daughter could push me and I would I'd rock back if I wasn't in the right state. Now, I don't know how easy it will be for me to get back into this state. I haven't really had anybody to practice with for a while, but I know I've only ever felt that once with my friend Ivan Howe testing me and he was literally leaning on me the same way and Ivan's bigger than Seasook and um, I remember feeling a real pain on the point of pressure, but I was just thinking, up, up, you can't affect me, you can't affect me. And Ivan was very impressed. I was impressed. This was another order of magnitude up and, I believe what happens in this sort of situation is somebody like Cecil Peter has Nimlik at a, obviously a way higher level than I have. And same as the other people that I know who I consider my seniors, who are people I really look up to, you know who you are. Um, they also, they sort of impart energy into you and I, as he's working my way up my back, I couldn't feel anything spooky going on, but I, I do believe that he imparted his state, his ability into me to somewhat. But I'm not saying I'm not to be too modest. I am somebody who has really put a lot of my life into this, so I'm okay at it. You know, I think I was ready for what he wanted to do. So I'm just going to show you that bit again. Okay, so he's, he's instructed me, keep it up, keep it. <laughs> Do it again. You watch, watch him this time, watch how hard he pushes, how much weight he puts in. There he pushes in. Uh, <laughs> that was was amazing. That was freaky. Um, just watching it, it always blows me out because it. I look like, you know, like an inanimate object, like a, a stone statue or something. He's just there's no way he's going to push me. Like I said before, like a tree. And I remember the feeling. I remember I couldn't really even feel him touching me, you know, like when Ivan did it to me, I felt a pain on my sternum from all the weight of his, you know, probably 100 kilos leaning into me with his legs straight like out. 
putting it all on me. This one, I didn't even really feel him pushing me. And, um, but he was, you know, and you can see that he's not kidding. He's actually, he's trying. And um, so um, that gives me something to aim for. And I just want to finish off talking about this basically to say that um, this, this is what makes Wing Chun special is the um, this thing that sort of defies explanation. Um, the physically, you shouldn't be out if you just you just your feet on the ground, and somebody's pushing on the fulcrum up here of your chest. You know, this is your body, and these are two pegs on the ground, and somebody's pushing here. I mean, really, how can you resist it? It shouldn't really be possible, but it is. It's just by not fighting at all and being filled up with the mind we become this incredible one thing. And I guess we do become like a tree and some teachers of Wing Chun, like they do in Tai Chi, talk about an energy root going down the ground like roots of a tree. And I'm not averse to that. Some of my Wing Chun uh, friends don't like that idea, but personally, I don't know. I don't think it's a bad idea. I think it, it's sort of... It's as valid as anything else to think you're like a tree that's half buried in the ground. Um, still sort of a bit freaky and miraculous, but that's literally what Nim Lick's about. What Wing Chun Mind Force is about is this insanely powerful force that's hidden within you and me and everybody else. Um, it's just we've lost it in our modern world because we think too much, you know. Uh, Sisuk is the man that said to me, um, don't think, feel, you know, like Bruce Lee said, but he, he said, don't think too much, you know, don't, um, he said, uh, the Nim of Nim Da or Nim Lik Lim, it means feel, it means a feeling, and that's, that's, that's the thing, it, it's a feeling rather than, if you think about it, you think that can't happen. Your mind will start to freeze, but if you if you just feel it, then it works. All right, let's just watch it one more time and that'll be the end. Yeah, so thanks for watching. It's always a pleasure. Uh, I've got lots more to talk about and um, best wishes with your Wing Chun and please write to me at any time, ask me questions and, you know, if you think this is a fake that we did it together, <laughs> you're, you're welcome to that opinion. I can, I, I cross my heart and hope to die. It's absolutely not fake. It's Absolutely, you know, I mean, that was the first time I've seen him in a year. I only met him once before and there was no point in bullshitting. All those guys around watching saw there was nobody standing behind me holding me up or I didn't have a magician's sort of rig going into the floor or something like that. I was just standing there, didn't know he was going to push on me and next thing he was pushing hard. And, um, yeah, that's, that, you experience that, you think, wow, Wing Chun is amazing. Okay. Thanks, guys. I'll just um, leave it there.